Why did Rose fall in love with Jack, and what's the psychology of why it's so easy for you to fall in love on your vacations? We saw this in the movie, Titanic, dating shows like The Bachelor, and you surely also experienced this in your own life, that falling in love on vacation is so easy to do. But why? First, there's novelty, which increases shared excitement. This causes a sense of bonding and intimacy. When we try new things together, we develop a shared vulnerability, which causes us to develop a sense of trust and openness with one another. This vulnerability can deepen emotional connections and lead to romantic feelings. It also causes mutual growth, creating memories and releases dopamine in the pleasure reward system in your brain. This is why if you want to move things along really quickly with someone you really like, share a novel experience with them. And if it could also get both of your adrenalines racing, such as in Titanic when they were running away from someone who was shooting at them, it's even better to create a connection. Now this topic is probably for a whole nother video, but have you ever noticed that you become much more physically attracted to a person who you shared an adrenaline racing experience with? Yes, it has to do with our sympathetic division of our autonomic nervous system engaging during that moment that we have an adrenaline rush, which we may easily confuse as sexual attraction to that person. This is because our sympathetic autonomic nervous system also engages during mating. What's interesting is how did Jack first meet Rose? <laughs> Right, during a moment of adrenaline. In psychology, this is called excitation transfer theory, where the physiological arousal experienced during an adrenaline-inducing event can be misattributed to feelings of romantic attraction or love towards them. This moment of excitation transfer with Jack saving her life caused them to be massively psychologically drawn to each other. Second, on vacation, it's easier to fall in love because you don't have to deal with the stressors and responsibilities of life, but instead you're having carefree fun and relaxation. The hardest part of a relationship is the daily grind of life. On vacation, you don't have much of that. You're not opening and paying bills, not reading stressful emails from your boss. You're not studying for stressful tests. You usually have maids and room service. You also may be consuming a little bit more alcohol than typical. You're open to spending money and you may even be celebrating something which makes you feel even more carefree. Life is interesting, easy, and novel, which increases your open and excitement to sometimes find someone new to share your new experiences with. In the movie, the ship Titanic was new and exciting. Titanic was called the ship of dreams. And it was. It really was. Jack was new and exciting. Cal was old, boring, and controlling. Yes, you are! In, my <laughs> in psychology, this is called cognitive consistency theory, where we seek harmony to avoid undesirable inconsistencies and actively seek out desirable consistencies. Have you ever dated someone and they all of a sudden started to change and surely enough they dumped you? Yes, their desire for cognitive consistency can possibly help explain that. Third, reduced inhibitions from being away from familiar surroundings and social circles, which may lead to a decrease in inhibitions and lack of concern for long-term consequences. Therefore, do you think Rose and Jack made it count? To make it count. I think that saying has now turned into a subliminal descriptor for that exact act. A reduction in inhibitions can make you more willing to take risks, engage in spontaneous behaviors, and connect with others on a deeper level. Because of anonymity, reduce social pressures and social judgments from people we know, and what is known as psychological disassociation from your regular identity or self-concept. When you are away from your physical and social cues of how you should behave, based on how you've always behaved, you are freer to behave however you want. And combined with alcohol, you behave much more carefree. Have you ever met someone who had a completely different personality when they're on vacation? Psychological disassociation has a lot to do with that. Back to the movie Titanic, think what it would have been like if Rose first met Jack in the street instead of on the Titanic. Imagine that she was out simply in her own town with her rich friends of her own age. Yes, she would probably not be nearly as receptive to Jack because she would naturally feel those social, physical, and psychological cues to keep acting the way she's always acted. Just another pauper hitting on me. Go away, you bum. This is absurd. You don't know me, and I don't know you, and we are not having this conversation at all. 
You are rude and uncouth. But on Titanic, it was all new, novel, and Rose felt much more anonymous on the ship. Flying. She had no prior cues of how she should act based on prior circumstances and felt minimal peer pressure to not talk to Jack, which helped them to rapidly advance their relationship. For when we are on vacation, we have what is called selective attention. This is where you may become more attuned to a potential partner's positive attributes and disregard or not even think of any potential negatives, such as drinking. <laughs> this is exacerbated by the second item we discussed of having little to no stressors or responsibilities while on vacation. It's a lot easier to get along with a partner when all you have to do is have fun all day in a new and exciting novel environment. No bills, no bosses, no tests, no laundry, no cleaning, no food shopping, and no social pressures from all your friends. Therefore, you don't think about that person's negatives because your attention doesn't go to the negatives of life since on vacation they don't exist. Rose surely experienced a lot of this meeting Jack on Titanic instead of in town. Imagine this situation. Where do you live, Jack? Well, do you see that bridge over there? Just the other night I was sleeping under a bridge. I don't think that relationship would have went very far, no matter how much W Riz Jack had. But on Titanic, she had selective attention, so Rose was not thinking about what it would be like to live under a bridge with Jack, or even date a guy who lives under the bridge. On the flip side, Jack was probably not thinking too much about breaking the news to Rose that when they got off the Titanic, instead of checking into the Plaza Hotel, they would be sleeping with the rats in the New York City subway system. When the ship docks, I'm getting off with you. But then again, I think making it count was more on Jack's mind than Rose eventually finding out that being homeless is not nearly as fun and romantic as it's made out to be in fictional onstage productions. So the big question, would Jack and Rose have made it together? <laughs> Based on everything we discussed and everything we saw on the ship, psychologically says absolutely not. However, things we saw off the ship interestingly suggest that they would have made it. And here's why. My hair is poking me in the eye. Clearly meeting Jack was very impactful to Rose where she apparently did a lot of what Jack encouraged her to do. And she had the necklace so they wouldn't have had to sleep in the subway tunnels for too long. Unless... <laughs> Jack had stolen the necklace because he's been known to have sticky fingers. Real slick cowboys, they put it in my pocket. Shut up. It isn't even your pocket, is it, son? Property of A.L. Rias. That was reported stolen today. No, I just borrowed it. I was going to return it. I was going to return it. Oh, an honest thief. We have an honest thief here. Do we? And yeah, Jack had the opportunity to steal the necklace while on the ship, and he didn't. But maybe he was going to steal it closer to when the ship was disembarking because it was a lot easier to run and hide on the land as opposed to in the confines of the ship. There's nothing better than arguing about a fictional movie. Now in the comments, what do you think would have happened to Rose and Jack if the Titanic made it to New York? Let everyone know in the comments below. Subscribe for more. <laughs>